So I have a quadratic here. The general form is ax squared plus bx plus c. First thing you always want to do is see if you could factor that. If you could factor it to be the factors of 4 to get you a 6, there is no way to do that. Then the next step is to see if you could complete the square. Subtract 4 from both sides. That's going to give me x squared minus 6x is equal to negative 4. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take half of the b value, negative 3, and square it. So I'm just going to add 9 on here. I can't just add 9 on to the left side without adding 9 on to the right side. And the whole reason I take half of that b value, negative 3, is so I could get two quantities that are the same. Now this will factor to x minus 3 times x minus 3. And that's going to be equal to 5. Well, I have one of these and another one of these. So I have x minus 3 quantity squared is equal to 5. So even though I can't factor it, by using this technique of taking half that value, squaring it and adding it to both sides, I could solve it by reversing the square. Now I take square root of both sides. Square root and square cancel. I have x minus 3 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 5. Remember, anytime you take square root, it's going to be positive or negative. Solving for x, I add 3 to both sides. And I get x is equal to 3 plus root 5 or 3 minus root 5. Those are my two solutions. However, so that's how you solve an equation, a quadratic equation with completing the square. Another case scenario, though, is if I have a value in front of the x squared, I cannot complete the square here. So what I have to do here is divide both sides of the equation by 2. Whatever value that is, you're going to divide both sides of the equation by it. And that's going to give you x squared by itself. Now I have x squared, 16 divided by 2, plus 8x. Negative 10 divided by 2, negative 5, is equal to 0 divided by 2, 0. I'm checking to see if there are factors of 5 to give me an 8. There are none. So I'm going to add that 5 to both sides to get x squared plus 8x is equal to 5. Again, the algorithm here is you take half of the b value, so half of 8 is 4, and then you square it. So half of 8 is 4, squared is 16. I can't just add 16 on the left without adding 16 on the right. So now my equation is still balanced. Now I have the quantity x plus 4 squared is equal to 21. Again, by taking that, cutting it in half, and squaring it, it's going to give me that x plus 4. So now I could factor that to x plus 4 squared. Square root of both sides. Square and square root will cancel. That'll give me x plus 4 is equal to the square root of 21. Remembering that it's both positive and negative. So then I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides, get a solution x is equal to negative 4 plus root 21, or x is equal to negative 4 minus root 21. These are exact values. Um, you can find the decimal approximation using your graphing calculator. If it had batteries, and you would just enter these values in your calculator and get the decimal approximation. Again, if this were a function f of x, equals 2x squared, that would be a quadratic in the form y equals x squared, where it would cross the x-axis. Right, That quadratic would be a graph like that. That point of intersection would be where y equals 0. You would have two solutions because there are two points of intersection on the x-axis. Okay.